And good morning, church. How we doing? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I got a bunch of fifth graders that are better than you right now. Okay. Get your feet flat on the ground. Sit up in your chair. Good morning, church. How we doing? Hey. Amen. There we go. Well, you know, I'm so thankful to be here um, as we get going uh, this morning. First of all, shout out to our Tacoma crew. Right. I, I, right now I see all Pastor Wade and Ray and Mark Young up there. Pastor Coach is up there. He's probably watching ProSide um, um, Highlands on his phone. And then Wade is right next to him watching us. And then somebody else is like watching main campus. And then they're running their whole service. It's like, it's like they're uh, in a sports bar with all of the screens and watching like five games on at one time. But it's about hearing the word of the Lord. Amen. Well, no, we're good. I'm glad we took the tithes and offerings, and, and we are going to give a special offering at the end. Um, but I'm just here to remind you, church, that, that we are living in the last days, if you don't know it, okay? With everything that's happening, I know right now, us Americans, we're fixated. I know I am, because I hate every time I got to go to the, the gas station and put gas, and I see $5 up there, right? And so the enemy is still distracting us from what's really happening. If you really get into the Word and you're you're in the book of Daniel, you're in the book of Ezekiel, all right, you see that the things that are are going into motion right now, okay, we are living in the end times. I don't know when that is. I don't know. Me and my wife say it every other day. It's, I want to see the Lord come before I die, and then it's, I hope he doesn't come before, before we die, all right? But there's things in motion, right? Russia is Magog, okay, as you read into the Bible, and they're starting to make their ascent. And remember that everything runs through Israel, okay? So as you're paying attention to the news, yes, see what's happening with the gas prices and all of the natural gas that we're doing, but pay attention because now we're going to start seeing we have to be awake, church, okay? We have to be awake to what's happening here in the end day because we are the hope of the world, amen? Okay, so we cannot get, again, we're going to get emotions toward it, we're going to feel it, but we have to keep our eyes wide open and we have to be vigilant and alert because we are going to help people come to Christ so that they can be in heaven one day and they know how to deal with things that are coming in the end. Amen? Yes. All right? So today we're, we're, in this, we're in this series going from broken to blessed, all right? And so we, we've heard, we, we talked about forgiveness last week, why that's so important, right? And just, and just bringing these things and, and I, th- I believe that a lot of the, the, the message in this, in, in this series, all right, is to get us right, okay, to get ourselves right. It's not just about being blessed, all right? It's not just about fixing ourselves so that we can receive more from the Lord, okay? Again, we got to get our hearts and our minds ready for whatever is to come, all right? Because we, you know, we may see it on the, pap- on, on the pages of the Bible, all right, but living through it is another thing. All right, so this, this whole thing about going from being broken to blessed is about preparing us for what's going to happen uh, in the end. All right, and today I've titled our message, And Then There Were Two. All right, and so we, we're, we're talking about loving unconditionally. Ooh, here we go. Yep, coming with the love deal now, okay? Not the I love you, you're so beautiful, let me buy you dinner, let me get on one knee and marry you. We're talking about the type of love that endures until the end, Amen. The type of love that Jesus Christ showed for us on the cross, right, so that we could have a second chance at this life and not live in hell, all right? But again, we are supposed to be like that as well, right? We are supposed to, as he loved us, we have to love out there, all right? And so we, it's, I titled this message, and then there were two, because we see in the Gospels, right, when, when the, uh, the religious leaders of the day were testing Jesus, right? One of the many questions, right? There's what, 10 commandments, there's over 900 laws or something like that in the Old Testament, right? And understanding that these religious leaders, that was their job, they, they knew their version of the Bible, the first five books from front to back. You know, there was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, right? They, and they had different little t- uh, tweaks within their belief system, right? But they all kind of followed the first five books of the Bible. So they knew those laws inside and out. Every, every Jewish boy back then, from the time that they could from the time that they could read, learn the word, okay? And then if you were good enough, if you were smart enough, like, uh, like the apostle Paul was, right? His name was Saul. He was, you, you read about him in, in his epistles, right? He was like the smartest of the smartest, and then he went on and learned in the synagogue, all right? So these religious leaders, they knew they were trying to trap Jesus, all right? They didn't understand, though, right? Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, right? So Jesus was there in the beginning. So Jesus is the word, right? So these guys are trying to trap the word. It's kind of funny, okay? 
So one, but one Pharisee who kind of saw where, where Jesus' mind frame was going uh, and, and where he was talking and where he was moving, he asked him, Lord, what, what, are the great, what is the greatest commandment of all? Okay, And in Mark chapter 12, Jesus answers him and says, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. All right? So really, all Jesus did was take, all the, take the Ten Commandments, take the 900-something laws that come from the first five books of the Bible, and he summed it up in two. Okay? Love God, love people. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Love God, love people. All right? And the type of love that he talked about here is called agapio. Okay? Agape, we've heard it. Uh, spoken about, right, that agape love. We know that there's three types, right? There's eros love. That's the kind you feel for your wife or, or your spouse, right? That, that love that brings you together in that type of intimate relationship, right? Then there's phileo, right? Phileo is brotherly love, right? Your relation to one another, all right? This last love, agape, okay, is here it says that it is to take pleasure in the thing, prize it above all other things, be unwilling to abandon it or do without it. Okay, how many of you know that that's the type of love that Jesus had for you as he hung on the cross? Okay, he wasn't going to abandon you. He wasn't going to do without you. Okay, and like I said all the time, he said it in the garden. He didn't want it. Okay, the flesh part of him says, Lord, if you can, let this cup pass from me. But after that moment ended, he said, however it may be, let your will be done. Because he knew that if he didn't take up that cup, right? He wasn't going to be able to save us from eternal damnation. We were done, okay? But now what this verse is telling us is that we have to love like that. Whew, that's hard sometimes, right? But this whole thing about discipleship, you know, the, the, the one-to-one that we do, okay, it's, that's where it's at. In, in the relationships, right? Developing that agape love for one another, because okay, it's all good and great in the beginning, right? Until something happens, right? Until it all hits the fan, okay? That's where we see what type of love that we have. He also says in John chapter 13, A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, the amazing thing is this, all right? We're going to talk about the story of Joseph, okay? Not Joseph Miller, okay? Joseph, the descendant of, of the forefathers of our faith, okay? And we're going to talk about this type of love. And what you got to understand is that God created our families as our first ministry and example to disciple. I'm going to say that again. God put you in the family that you're in, okay? Your husband, your wife, your kids, aunts, uncles, in order for you to develop this agape love, right? Because here's the truth, right? You guys see me on Sundays. It's easy for me to love you guys because I only got to see you on Sunday. If you irritate me on Sunday, I can get over you in six days, come back, put a smile on my face, and be like, hey, praise the Lord, Miggy, I love you. Even though you won't come play the drums for me, I still love you, Miggy, Right? So it's easy because in, even when we get into conflict in church, even when we get into conflict outside there, it's so easy for us to cut people off, ain't it? Right? If, if, they, if, they, if I don't got to see them, I can be like, you know what? Well, the Lord is telling me I got to put distance between you and I because you're not healthy for my walk with Christ. Okay, but what about when it's your son and daughter? What about when it's your mom and your dad? Okay? And too many times, folks, we're giving up our opportunity to witness to the world because we cannot love our family unconditionally. We may think that we do. Okay? We may think that we do, but we're talking about right there. We cannot do without it. And so the world is looking at us, right? And we're, you know, uh, you hear a pastor say, people just don't want to go to church because they don't want to go to church. Right? But part of it is, right? 
I, I, I work in an office full of, of, of non-believers, okay? The first thing that happens when a, when, when a believer does something wrong is, you see, and that guy's supposed to be one religious person. You see him, oh, he's supposed to believe God. And look, look, look how he's acting, right? And so we have to be able to, to get our house right. We got to get our house in order. Tell your, tell your neighbor, look at your wife, look at your husband, okay? Don't say it with too much conviction, but say, honey, we got to get our house in order. Get, come on, let's go. Tell, look, hey, come on, don't get quiet on me. We got to get your house in order, okay? Because it's our homes that we got to get fixed first, church, okay? That's going to witness to the world, okay? We cannot, and again, we got to love the people in this room, but you cannot love the people in this room more than the people that live in your own house. Amen? And that's hard. That is hard. Okay? Anybody that's been married any, any length of time, okay, will understand that. Anybody that's, that raises teenagers definitely understands that. Okay? So we're going to talk about the story of Joseph. Like you guys know, okay, Joseph, right? So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? Jacob's name turned into Israel. He had 12 sons. Okay, one of his sons was Joseph. If you kind of know the backstory of Jacob, all right, he got sent away. He double-crossed his brother Esau, right? Esau was the oldest. They were twins, all right? He came out of the womb grabbing his heel. That's how he got the name Jacob, meant trickster, because he was trying to switch the birth order, right? Because in Jewish culture, right, the oldest male was the one that got everything. He got a double portion of the blessing, and he was the one that everything got passed down to, right? In our terms, in Hawaiian homes, if you're the oldest, you got the, you, you got the house on in Series 7 like Devin going to take. Oh, I know, Devin, you're not the oldest. Sorry, not going to be you. So, oh, I'm sorry. Soft spot. That's why you live couple there. Okay? So that's Jacob, all right? So after he double-crossed his brother, okay, the brother wanted to kill him, all right? The mom sent him to go be with his uncle. Right there, he, he was working for his uncle. He had two beautiful daughters. Again, back in the day, yes, they married within their family. Okay, uh, uncle had two daughters. He loved the younger one more. Same thing, Jewish culture. You cannot marry off the younger girl before you marry off the older girl. Okay, so Jacob goes there, says, I will work seven years to marry your younger daughter. Because she, I, I love her, right? Worked seven years. They say, he said it went by in, in, in a blip for him, all right? On the wedding night, the uncle did the okie doke on him, okay? Put the older daughter in there, all right? And consummated the marriage that way, all right? Woke up the next day, saw the older sister, didn't love her. And the uncle was like, now if you want my, now if you want my younger daughter, you got to work seven more years. So he had, to, he had to marry the older daughter, even though he didn't want to, okay? And then he worked seven more years to marry the younger one. Okay, they left. He had all his sons. You talk about dysfunctional family, right? The two sisters hated each other, right? So they were competing against each other about who can give them, right? Kids was the most important thing in order to carry on the lineage. So the older sister, you know, started having kids, right? Then the younger sister got mad. So she gave her servant to the man to make babies with him. So now, you know, again, that, that happened with, with, his grand, with, with, their, with her grandma-in-law back in the day, all right? So then the older sister gets mad. It's like, oh, you want to do that? So let, let me give him my servant, right? And here's, here's Jacob, right? Just, I don't know if he's living the life or if he's, like, upset at it, right? He's just taking it on, let, letting the lady tell him what to do. And then finally, later on, right, the one that he loved, God opened her womb, and she had two sons, right? The oldest one was Joseph. The youngest one was Benjamin, all right? And so now we pick up the story, okay? Obviously, J Joseph, being the son of his favorite wife, right? He was, he had all the affection of the dad, right? So, but Jacob had all these older sons. He had 10 older sons, okay, that he didn't care for because they didn't come from the woman that he loved. And so now, you know, Jacob is using his son. This is the apple of his eye. He's sending them out, spying on the brothers, right, making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do, all right? And this is where the whole, you know, you guys hear Joseph had the coat of many colors, okay? It wasn't necessarily a coat of many colors. What it was was it was a long robe, okay, where, where all of his brothers had kind of this short coat, right, that was like a work coat because, again, back, back in the day, right, they only basically had, they had one, one pair of clothing, Right? So their coat was everything to them to keep them safe. Well, what the coat signified was that Joseph, okay, 
Let's, let, remember now, he's number 11, right? And we kind of talked about Jewish culture where the oldest got everything. He got to wear, he got to wear the nice coat because he was going to inherit everything. He was going to get it all, right? He was the one that they were saying, Jacob was basically telling all of the, the 10 older brothers, you guys aren't any good, okay? This, this is going to be the leader of our family, right? So can you imagine the dysfunction that that created within the family? 10 older brothers, right? Working for the dad, right? They were all in the sheep business, okay? Taking care of the sheep, right? Raising them all, and here comes this, here comes this kid. They don't understand all of the, the mix-up that's happening between Jacob and, and his wives. But the dysfunction that they created because he decided to say, Joseph, you're the one. You're number 11 in the family. You're going to get it all. All your brothers are going to follow you. And so now we kind of we, you know, we, we know that, that they took him. They were upset with him. They, they threw him in a pit right, and sold him off. Okay? And so we kind of pick up the story there. All right, so number one thing is this, okay, for all you younger siblings and all of us in here, okay, understand that, that not everybody in your family can deal with the favor that you have, amen? Okay, and Joseph's problem, okay, I'm not going to let him off the hook, all right, he went around flaunting it in front of his 10 older brothers, okay, telling them nanny nanny boo boo, right, you guys can't touch me because dad's going to protect me. Right, so we got to understand that within these relationships as we go, okay, we need to learn, if you're the younger one, we need to learn how to always give honor and respect, even if God's favor is on you, because some people can't handle it. Some people can't handle the favor of God that's on your life because that's God-given. They only see that, man, how come only you get, but I cannot? Okay, and again, when we're talking about within our families, right, and we're trying to bring them into the fold and let them know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, we have to understand that. Because they only see what, what, we, what you allow them to see, Amen. Okay, so as we go, as we're going on, he's in Egypt, right? All of these things are happening. The brothers were so upset at him, okay? Lied to the dad, put could go, goat's blood all over it, all right? And now we kind of pick up the story, and we're looking at Joseph because Joseph, I believe, as, as I kind of studied this, right, he, did the, he knew how to love God and love people even within his family, okay? So imagine being thrown in a pit, sold off into slavery, right? Again, whether it's your fault or not, it doesn't matter. Your brothers did this to you, right? The dudes that were actually supposed to protect you, right? The dudes that you love and you're in relationship with, they threw you in a pit. And they were actually, they, they were actually willing to kill him, okay? They wanted him dead, all right? How many of us have, 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 have some of that, right? It's not physical, right? But how many, how many of us have killed our brother or our sister, how many of us have killed as we cut off our father and our mother, or our uncle and our aunt, right? Or even our children. Just cut them off because we couldn't handle what God had given to them. So again, let's just put it in mind and let's go see, right, how the world looks at us, right? How the world is picturing us. Why am I going to want to get into some type of, uh, again, to them, some type of religion where they can't even treat their own family right. If they can't treat their family right, how are they going to treat me right? Amen? Right? And so, but we do it, right? We're able to come home, I believe, right, at least for me, is when I come home, right, we see it as a safe place, right, where we can kind of, we, when, when we go out and we got to deal with people, we, we kind of armor up. Right? We, we make sure that we protect ourselves so that we can't get hurt from anybody. And again, if, if it does happen, right, it's easy for us to just cut them off. But when you're in the comfort of your own home, when, when you're within your, your own family, all right, you kind of you, you kinda like to let that stuff go. And I think sometimes we take for granted right, that, uh, that safe place that we give to our family members. Okay? Sometimes... Sometimes one person can take off the armor, sometimes one person doesn't, okay? Or, or, and that's just how they're built, all right? And so we, we, we treat them in, in a certain way. We act a certain way to them that's like, yo, where is this coming from? Like, uh, you're supposed to love me, right? So it's, it's one where it's, it's kind of a, a, a two-headed thing where I feel safe, so I'm going to let go, and then it's like, yo, why are you coming to me like that? Like, I just got home from work. 
can I eat something first real quick? I'm not trying to say anything to my wife, I promise. I promise. Okay? So again, he's thrown into this pit. Now he's having to deal with the reality of it. Okay? So he went from being the dude, right? He went from hero to zero like that. And now we kind of pick up the story. Now he's dealing with all this. Let's, let's, not, let's not think that he's not dealing with the fact that he's, he's dealing with feelings of rejection. Okay? He's, de- he's dealing with, with insecurities now that are popping up in his mind because Because, oh my gosh, how could they have done this to me? All right? But through it all, okay, through it all, we're going to see that that Joseph continues to do what God wants us to do. To love him with everything that we have and to love love people. So the first point is real simple. we got to love God. In Genesis chapter 39, picks up here, okay? So what was happening was he got sold into slavery, Potiphar, okay, Potiphar bought him out of slavery from, from Ishmaelites. Again, it's all, it's all kind of funny how, right, they're all family. And, and they brought him into Egypt, sold him off, okay? And because God's favor was still with him, God's favor was still with him now, okay? Even though he's at his lowest point, God had him covered. So quickly he rises up in Potiphar's house. He becomes, um, you know, basically the master slave, okay? He earned the trust. Because God's favor was on him, he earned the trust of Potiphar. Potiphar turned everything over to him in in running his home. Okay? So Potiphar was, so now here here he comes. This is like his new family, right? Potiphar is kind of like his pseudo dad, right? And Potiphar's wife is like his mom. He's in this close relationship where all the trust is being put on him to to honor this person that that has taken him in, obviously bought him out of slavery, but now taking him into his home, right? You don't elevate somebody in your home, right, and trust them with everything that you have without having some type of intimate relationship with them, amen? Right? When you're raising teenagers, okay, you don't just let them start doing whatever you want them to do unless they've earned something in, in, in your eyes, okay? As a spouse, right? Let's call a spade a spade. You don't you don't feel comfortable with allowing your, your, your spouse to go out and, and enjoy time with their friends if there hasn't been some type of investment put into it. Amen? And if they double-cross you, what happens? Lock them up in the bedroom, throw away the key, you ain't going nowhere. Okay? So understand that, that the favor and what he did built up this trust with Potiphar, where Potiphar didn't even have to be there anymore. Okay? And then, you know, Joseph, I guess, Joseph was a handsome-looking dude, kind of handsome like Joseph Miller back there. That's how he landed Mona, all right? And so Potiphar's wife was trying to come after him, wanted to have, wanted to have a relationship with him, okay? And so here, here he answers her, right? She, she says to lie with me. He says, but he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Okay, so again, loving God. It says that we got to love him with everything, our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. Okay, men, how, how hard do you think that was for him? Come on, let's call a spade a spade. Your wife cannot get mad at you. We're in a safe space in church. Okay? Beautiful Egyptian lady comes up to you and says, come and mess up my sheets with me. Do you know how hard it probably was for him in that moment? But more than he loved himself, he loved God. And that's what he said with him. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Okay? He knew the word. I know I say it every week, guys. You got to get into your Bible. Okay? Small group is great, but it's not enough. Okay? Reading a devotional every day is enough. You got to learn the word. You got to memorize scripture. Okay? Because David said, I hid your word in my heart that I might not what? Sin against you. He didn't say I read a devotion every day. He didn't say, I just, went to gri- I just went to grow group or small group. It said, I hid your word in my heart that I cannot sin against you. 
So when you know the word, okay, and this took me a long time. Okay, once I realized that I had to read this thing every day, okay, not just say I'm going to pull up a devotional on my Bible app and check, get check marks off, okay, but sit here and read the same verse over and over and over and over again until I understood it. And then when I got thrown into situations, I had to execute it. Did I understand that I could withstand the wickedness that was out there? Because it's crouching for everybody. Everybody out here, we know it. Okay, envy, strife, malice, murder, all of it. The only way to combat it is the word. Joseph knew the word. Okay, he knew even in that moment, even though he wanted to give in, he didn't because he knew he knew this word. Not only did knowing this word help him to not commit sin, but it made him realize how much he loved his God. If there's anything that I can testify to you guys about in reading this word is it's taught me how much I love God. When I get into the word and I start to read and dig and research and I realize, oh my goodness, God, you are so good to me. But before I didn't, I didn't know. I only knew the couple verses that I could say when I wanted something from him, right? 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 Oh, God, um, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, make my request known to God. Uh, peace and understanding that surpasses all, uh, the peace that surpasses all understanding will come into my, uh, cover my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Right? Delight myself in the Lord that, that I can get the desires of my heart. Right? I used the few words that I knew that I heard some preacher say on TV to fit what I wanted. Okay? And within the last three years, okay, God allowed me to see that I had to change myself in order to work this word, okay? When you hear people say, stand on the word, that's what they mean. You got to keep saying the same scripture over and over and over and over again, okay? When you're fighting with your spouse, when you're fighting with your kids, when you're having something wrong at work, okay? That's what you got to stand on. You got to work the word because when you speak the word, God responds, okay? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? It's impossible to please God without faith. Okay, so if you don't know this word, okay, you cannot activate God. Joseph knew that in that moment, he had to. He had to activate everything that he had learned up until that point. Okay, understand, right? He was, he said it in the verse, there is nobody in this house greater than me. Do you understand the type of power that he had in his hand? He could say, go left, and they would all move. He, he was the guy, okay? There was nobody else that could trump him except Potiphar, and Potiphar was off doing, the Bible doesn't say, doing other things. I don't know. But left his whole house in charge with him. Now here's the big one, okay? Here's the next verse, 11 and 12, in Genesis chapter 39. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside. Okay, understand the devil, men, women, all of us, the devil comes when nobody's around, okay? He he was in the house that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his house. He left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. How many of you of you guys are willing to run figuratively naked in front of the world in order to show them how much you love God? Okay. How many of us only play Christian on Sunday? But then when we're faced up against it, same thing when we go into our own house. Right. Like I said, working in a workplace full of non-believers. We have family members that are non-believers. What is the first thing that they say when you do something wrong? Just like I said, ah, that guy, he don't believe. How can we act one way today, one way for an hour during the week in small group, but the rest of the time, we, we are not willing to stand up and expose ourselves for God? That's what that was, right? So basically, he had on ear lava lava on, she didn't pull him off, and brought him and run outside the house naked. Okay? Willing to expose himself, embarrass himself for the gospel of Christ of what he believed in. Why can't we do that with our family members first? Why do we feel like we got to protect ourselves the most against them? When if you got the favor of God and you know the word, everything's going to work itself out. Because we can't control it. 
Amen? Right? Your cousin irritates you. Right? They're doing something off. Oh, oh my gosh. Do you? <sighs> but we got to be willing with anybody and everybody, okay, especially in these end days because the enemy is out there, okay? The pastor that I listen to all the time said, back when Jesus walked his disciples to the actual gates of hell, how many of you know that there's a place in the Middle East where it's actually known as the gates of hell? He walked his disciples and said, the devil will not prevail against the church. Right here, stand upon this rock. So guess what the devil's job is to do? Jesus picked a fight with him 2,000 years ago. So his attack is on the church. Those of you that are in this building, he don't care about the world because he don't got to do nothing about them. They're living their life. But it's us right here that he's coming after, right? Because he has to divide the church, right? Just like he did to Job, all he wants us to do is curse God and die. That's all the devil wants. Okay, but if we know this word and we're willing, we have to, we cannot be closet Christians anymore. We cannot. We got to stand up for what is right. Everywhere we go, in everything that we do. Okay? And we gotta, it got to start in our house. I'm going through that right now. You, men, we got to stand up and be the priest, the protector, and the provider of our family. You got to lead. We got to lead. What does it mean to lead? It means to, number one, get in here and know this word. Okay? Because it's a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. So when you're the leader of your home and you know the word, God will show you where to go. Okay? And when he does that, he teaches you how to love unconditionally. And that's where I'm at. I'm trying to figure it all out. Okay? With, without withholding anything from anybody. In your own family. Because then the world's going to look at you. You love your family that way. Okay, I feel comfortable with coming to church with that person. They're not going to do me wrong. Right? But if we have dysfunctional relationships within our family, how are we going to win people to the kingdom? When again, understand now, the world is looking for anything and everything that they can use against you to say that they don't want to go in church because at the end of the day, they just don't want to go to church. So anything, any ammunition that they can use against us, they will use. Okay? Let's do that. Let's love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul. Let's live in a way that everybody knows that we believe. Okay? Like I said, there's things that I've had to cut out of my life and give up in order for me to live that way. Okay? Now I need to learn how to be a parent to my children in order for me to teach them how they need to live one day. Because I didn't always not do those things back in the day. Because I was still chasing after the world. Had one foot in, one foot out. So my children saw that. And now I, I'm not trying to correct it, but I'm trying to have conversations with them and teach them the right way. I have to do the same thing with my own family members. It's so easy for me to get up here in front and preach to you guys. I don't want to preach to my family because I don't want to have those awkward conversations. I don't want those feelings to rise up in me if they, if they look at me sideways. I'm just keeping it all the way 100. It's so easy for me to get up here and talk to you guys. But I don't want to do it to my family. I don't want to do it to my close inner circle of friends because I'm embarrassed. Can I get real with you guys? And if anything, no offense to you guys, I'm supposed to care about them more than I care about you guys. Because in the end, if I love them, I don't want them to go to hell. But I'm too ashamed for that. Right? Again, this function I got to correct inside my heart so that I can be in order to be an example to the world. Amen? Last one is love people. So we go through all of this, right? You guys know the story. Potiphar, so the wife, right? Falsely accused him, got thrown into prison, all right? Um, again, he has the favor of God on him. How be it? He becomes the head of O Triple C. The favor of God is on him so much that they turned it over to him. And they wasn't having inmates escape, I promise. Joseph had that place down pat. Okay? Then two of Pharaoh's servants come in, the baker, the cupbearer, had dreams, right? One of them was stealing from Pharaoh, got his head cut off. The other one was wrongfully accused. 
Joseph told him, please remember me. Of course, he didn't remember him, right? But Joseph kept living excellently, okay, doing his thing, diligent, right, being big time where he was at. The coach told me that. I, I always try to remember that. He was big time where he was at. Pharaoh started having dreams, all right? Then the cupbearer finally was like, hey, there's this guy, Joseph, not Joseph Miller, <laughs> that came up and told me that help me get out of, help me get out of jail because he, he understood my dream, right? Comes, he interprets Pharaoh's dream. Who knew that he went from being number one in Potter's first, number two in Potiphar's house to number two in all of Egypt? So that's the message for all of us in here. Men, women, children, right? Be big time where you're at, okay? He developed all the skills to be the second in command of Egypt. Understand that that was the center of the world at that time, okay? Everything that he learned in Potiphar's house, he used it up in Egypt to run the thing, okay? So no matter how minuscule you think your job might be, trust me, God has, if God has given you visions and dreams about what's going to be, you, gotta, you, you cannot wait to prepare yourself now, okay? Use it as a launching pad because when he got there and he saved the entire land of famine, right? That, that was the dreams, seven fat calves, seven skinny calves, right? The fat calves were seven years of plenty, and then they were going to hit seven years of famine. So what did Joseph do, right? He knew the word. Guess what he did? Oh, wow, this is amazing. Thank you, Jesus, okay? He told everybody in Egypt who, weren't, who didn't believe in God, you got to bring me how much into the storehouse every, every year? The 10th, huh? Sound familiar, right? So he was having non-believers tithe, and they were getting blessed. He never even know. They didn't even know, okay? Seven years, everybody had to bring a 10th of what they created, of what they planted, of what they harvested, and he put it in storehouses. So that when, when the seven years of famine hit, okay, Egypt was good. They actually were making money, okay, selling off the grain to all the land. Enter the picture of his brothers, okay? Here is, here is Israel, right? His name is Israel. He's got this huge family to feed. There's famine. Nothing for the sheep to eat anymore. Everything's dead. Sons, go up to Egypt. Go buy grain for us to bring home, okay? Joseph, understand, dysfunctional family, okay? He had all these years to stew in the anger and the strife and the malice, okay? But when he saw his brothers, he had nothing but love for them, okay? They didn't recognize him, right? He had the eyeliner, okay? He had the fake crown, right? They, he, 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 he didn't look like they knew, okay? But he knew, okay? And he set up this whole thing. Now, I will say this, right? He, he, was, he did put them, he did make them squirm, okay? Please don't do this to your family members. So he wanted to make sure that his dad was alive. He wanted to make sure that his baby brother Benjamin was alive, right? So he set them up. He set them up. He, he, he gave them the grain, sent them back, put their money in their bag, right? So they're like, oh, my gosh, did we just steal all of this food from Egypt, right? So they're, you know, they're like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? And he told them, the only way, right, um, that you guys can come back is if you bring Benjamin, but now remember, right, Joseph was his favorite son, and then he got, he got eaten by animals. So even more, Brother Benjamin was locked up. I mean, I cannot even imagine, I mean, like, worse than, what's her name, Rapunzel, in the Golden Tower, his hair wasn't long enough for anybody to climb up. But nope, he wouldn't do it. And finally, the brothers, right, so they all... All of this stuff from 20-something years ago start popping up in their head. Oh, my gosh, like, it's finally coming back to us. God is punishing us, right? So they're like, okay, we're going to take responsibility, bring them back. Bring them back. They have a big feast for them, okay? They eat, send them back with all the food, put the silver cup in Benjamin's bag, right? Stop them halfway down the road. And again, now he's a little bit conniving here, right? He's like setting them up, okay? Whoever has my cup in their bag is my prisoner. Oh, Benjamin has the cup in his bag. Those guys, if you talk about it hitting the fan, it hit the fan, okay? Because they even, like, the brothers were, it's my life. My life is on the line, okay? Nope, got to bring dad back. Brought dad back. He finally revealed himself to them, crying in tears, right? 
asking how everybody was doing. So we know the story, right? Israel leads his family into Egypt because his brother, uh, his son Joseph, is second in command in the entire world. All right? And they're safe. They're away from the famine. Right? Again, Egypt is good. They've got everything that they need. All right? So they can, they can create this great nation. Uh, Jacob dies. Israel dies. And here are the brothers now. Okay? So Israel finally dies. All right? And so now the other brothers are like, oh, man. He's coming after us now. He's going to get us. It's over. We were good when dad was around, but now that dad's gone, we're toast. Okay, so they bury their dad. Okay, we're talking about loving people now. Second point, loving people. Genesis chapter 50 picks up here in verse 18. And then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Okay? Loving others as yourself. A bad family member is a bad church member. A bad, I'm going to say it again. A bad family member is a bad church member. Because again, if you cannot have this type of love for your family, then how can you love those sitting around you that are not a part of your family? See, and here's the thing, guys, is the way that we love others, okay, the way that we love and see others is an indication of how, much we, of how we see and love ourselves. I'm going to say that again. How you love others is really an indication of how your heart feels toward yourself. So if you're judgmental, guess who you judging? Right? When you're trying to judge somebody, it's like you're coming up with excuses to make yourself feel better about yourself. Okay, when you're narcissistic and you're self-absorbed into yourself. All right? What does that mean? It means that I don't really love myself. I love this facade of myself, but I don't really love myself. I cannot treat myself the right way. It's about self-preservation. When, when it's about self-preservation, all I know how to do is protect. I don't want to change. Right? Right? When we try to protect, it's because I don't want to change what I, I don't want to change what's in me. I'm happy with my mess. I'm happy doing the secret sins that I do. I'm happy doing all of these things. So I'm gonna love I'm gonna love myself. I don't need to love you because I'm okay with what I'm hiding behind closed doors. But see, when you love others, right, the way that God loved us, look at what he just told to his brothers. It had nothing to do with him. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for you for what? So that what? So that I could save many lives. So when you love, other, when you love your family, do you understand that you are saving hundreds of people in your circle? Because it's not about you when you love others unconditionally, even when they double cross you, even when they're at the point, even when they wanted to cut you off. The love covers the multitude of sin, right? It's still there. It hurts. We're humans, okay? We got to process it. We got to deal with it. But how can I confidently go out and save somebody else's life if I cannot love my own family in my house? Why are we putting out our own family? So we can make ourselves feel good because I don't want to look at your face? And that's the hard part, right? That's the hard part is that we put all of these expectations on those around us to love us a certain way. God doesn't tell us to love that they got to love us a certain way. If they believe in God, God got to deal with them. But he tells me to love them with all my heart, lo love them as myself. 
So think about it. How do you really love yourself? Worship team, can you guys come up, please? That, and I think that's the toughest picture that we don't want to deal with, right? How do we really feel about ourselves? And that's hard. It's difficult because you, God is trying to expose things in your heart that sometimes we're not ready to deal with. Okay? Other people might have caused it. Okay? Other people might have caused walls to get put up in your heart, in your mind. Things trigger you. It happens. Okay? Right? We think things need to be a certain way. We were raised a certain way. Whatever it may be. Many things shape who we are. Okay? And I'm also not saying that you don't create boundaries and you don't create things within your life. But again, if we're withholding our love from our own family members, we cannot be effective witnesses. So you got to deal with how you love yourself. Really look in the mirror. James tells us that this word is a mirror. This word is a mirror. Okay? And maybe sometimes that's why we don't want to look into the word, because we don't really want to see who we really are. I know I don't. Not every day. I only want to see the good things about myself, right? Narcissistic. Oh, I'm Coach Abu, I do this and I do that. No, there's a lot of ugliness inside of me. Some things that my family and I went through in the last couple of weeks, it brought it out. But you know what? Thank God that he sent Jesus to this earth. Because as I started to process all of this, okay, getting our house in order, the word says, children, all of us, we're all still children in here, right? We all still have parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. You don't ever stop being a parent to your kid. Yes, they go out. Yes, they're going to get married. The relationship changes. The way you parent them changes. But you will always be a parent. Fathers, do not provoke your sons into anger, into wrath. Okay? We're all under somebody for the rest of our life. God put us in our families for a reason. He blessed you with the children that you have because he found you worthy to steward them in the way of the Lord. God gave us the parents that he knew that we needed. They might not have been the parents that we needed them to be all the time, but when it counts, they're there. God made you a sibling and a cousin and an uncle and an auntie to somebody because you were going to be the one that showed them what God's love is really about. It never ends. He's slow to anger. Yes, there's consequences that come with our dumb decisions, but he don't ever stop loving us. Do you know how many times God tried to save his people before he sent to Jesus? Even in his own, even in his own love, even though we may not see it, he had to send a flood and kill the whole earth and save eight people. That's how much he loved us. We may not understand it, okay? We may not know it all the time, but that's love. Okay, we cannot, we got to get our houses in order. Husbands, we got to love our wives like Christ loves the church. How did he love the church? That he was willing to go to a cross and die on it. Do we, like, I, I still have to. Do I love my wife that much? Right? And there, guys, there's going to come a time, I'm telling you, we're living in the end days. They're seeing it out there in Ukraine. Right? We're going to find out soon. Are we really made for that? Do we have that sacrificial love or are we going to throw them in front of us to save ourselves? So we got to practice it now, right? When it's just figurative things. So that when it's literal things, we have that for us. Because what do we always say? What do we all say? Ah, when it's time, I'll do it. Nope. Yep. Coach Devin will tell you, if you don't practice it, you ain't going to do it in the game. Okay, so let's, let's, let's work on it. Let's get our houses right because we are the greatest witness to our family. Deal with how you really see yourself and love yourself like God loves you because it's his saving grace, right? No matter what we did, no matter what we're going through, no matter who we even are still now, guess what? God of my present, God of my future, he holds it all together. Okay, let's rise 
And let's just give it all to the Lord. Amen. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my traditions. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. just lift our hands church let the word pierce your heart we know the work we got to do father god in jesus name i just pray right now that you continue to till the soil of our hearts lord that you help us lord to turn our hearts of stone to hearts of flesh toward our family members god we ask you to forgive us of all of our sins lord of anything that we have held against our own family members, our, our spouses, our children, our parents, our extended family, God. We know that you created the family as the first example for what we want the world to see as a model of your love. Father, I pray that you help us, Lord, to love them, to not withhold anything from them, God. That you forgive us of any, again, any, any malice or strife or anger of anything that we've held over them, God. We ask you to just come in and soften our hearts, God. Teach us how to love like you. Father, I pray that you help every family in this church get their house in order. Father God, that the men and the husband and the fathers of this church will get into your word, Lord that they will follow your word, they will follow your light and your lead, Lord, that you will help them to melt away all of the things of this world and keep their eyes fixed on you. Teach us how to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Father, I pray for all of our wives in here, our mothers in here, Father, that you help them to be the helpers that you created them to be for the man that you have connected them to, Lord that they will help to encourage, they will help to edify, Lord, they will help to push him into the leadership spot that he needs, Lord, the encouragement and the love that he needs to actually lead, Father. God, I pray that you break up any misconceptions that the world has given us on what love is about, on how it should be, on what it should be, on who it should be toward, God. Your word tells us what love is all about, Lord, that we love you with all our hearts, our minds, our strength, and our heart and we love others as ourselves. God, I thank you for the breakthrough that's coming. Father, I pray that you just give the plans that we need, Lord, as, as we are living in the end days, Lord. We put our faith and our trust in you. God, give us the courage, Lord, to live in a way that will draw all men unto you. 
we just love you and we praise you and we thank you and we worship your holy name and we all come into agreement and we say amen, amen. Woo, give somebody a hug next to you i love you please don't be mad at me don't ask anybody for my number i don't want any nasty text or emails you may go ahead and have a seat remember i love you on sunday now i gotta go love her every day Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes next time I'm up here. All right, before we move on with service, um, you guys know Pastor Wade. He's the, he, he's the hip dude, so he's got a little message for us all the way from Tacoma. So if you could fix your eyes on the screen, here we go. The devil is a liar. Hold on, hold on. We're going to get the sound. No audio. Okay. You know what I'm thinking is like, I, I think I got to go. I love Pastor Wade. I think I got to go buy him a bigger members only jacket. <laughs> We've been stuck in COVID. Um, no, I love my guy. Okay, I'm just kidding. Listen, I love you. Pastor Wade, I love you, dog. You're my guy. You're my guy. But Levi needs his members only jacket real quick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love y'all. Okay. Uh, to end things off, we got Wendy coming up here with our special offering. Here we go. Okay, um, so we are doing a special offering for those in Ukraine. We have a special offering for that. So you guys can go ahead and submit it online, proside.org, or Uncle Al and Drew will be um, passing this out, the tithe envelopes that you can put it into as well. So we are an Every Nation church, and we have seven total Every Nations across the country, and so the, the world, I'm sorry. And to correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> and so we will all be doing this in support of them. Okay, so in our tithe envelopes, you can do that or pearlside.org. I also did forget to mention earlier that you can submit your tithes with me here in person. I have the blue bag. Or you can um, online, pearlside.org, through our mobile app. Or you can also text as well to give. Okay, but of course, come to me afterwards if you have any questions about it. Okay, other than that, we are so excited to have you here. We're happy that you are here. If you are new or um, you guys want to get connected, you want to know what your next steps are, we are here for you. You can come to me afterwards. You can come to anyone with a Here to Serve shirt. Uncle Al, Coach Abu, my husband up here. We want to get you connected and get into a small group, find out what your next steps are. You can do that. And other than that... Um, I do have one announcement. We have our Fresh Start class happening every first Sunday of the month. Our next one is on April 2nd at 10.30 a.m. It is a one-hour class, and Uncle Al leads that class. And this is good if you are new to Pro Psychopole, if you are new in your faith, or if you need a refresher. And so this is good to come to, get that foundation and relationship with God. All right, I think that's... Okay, let's pray, guys, for the tithe. Thank you so much, Lord, for what you are doing, God, that you are moving in Ukraine, God, that when you are moving here, you are also moving everywhere else, God, and that we give this special offering unto you, Lord, and for your people, for the people that are hurting, the people that are mourning right now, the people that are wanting relief, God, that we give this special offering unto them, God, and that we lift them up, Lord, and that we believe for better days to come, God, that you are there and that your hand rests upon them, Lord. May peace surpass lord in jesus name amen give it up for my girl wendy over here she's gotten so much better i love you wendy i'm glad that every time i speak you're up on stage so now we get to see pastor wade's member only jacket again here we go good morning pearl side Kabbalah family we are here in tacoma washington but we wanted to check in with you before we start service here Awesome, we're so excited to you to continue the series from Broken to Bless. We want to let you know that we're going to be a part of the blessing of helping those churches, seven of them, 
Every Nation churches in Ukraine, and we're going to take up a special offering. So please, please go on to ProSide.org and support this special offering. That's why we had tithes at the beginning of our service today, so that we can go above and beyond and bless those churches that are in the Ukraine. So we're praying for them. Join us in prayer, but also support at ProSide.org. I love for you to be with us next week as we close the series broken to bless i'll do a message on reconciliation pray for us here in tacoma we're so excited we'll see you in just a bit aloha ahuyo and have a great rest of your day amen give him a hand all right so rise up to our feet a couple last things so remember fresh start right with uncle al april first week of april okay understand that we want we would love everybody to be able to get in it if you're we, we are going to be starting up our um, growth track as well, the prerequisite to be able to be in growth track uh, uh, is the Fresh Start class, and it's just kind of a review. The other thing I want to encourage everybody, beginning April 3rd, yes, my lovely wife, two services, okay, be beginning April 3rd, so let's get the word out there. Those of you guys that are online, please get into the house, okay, because it's important that we get into the house because this is where the power is at, right? Yes, online is great, but when we're with the people, that's when the Lord's power is really amongst us and here, and, and we can really hear from him and keep moving. Amen? Amen? All right. Have a great week. Remember, love your families. You know, look at, look, use this mirror, and, and also work to make sure that you see how God sees you, okay? Don't let the enemy keep reminding you of what you think you are, okay? But understand that amidst all of that, God tells us in his word how much he loves us. Amen? Amen. All right. Jesus on three. One, two, three. Jesus. Love you guys. See you later.